We're only like five days into the new year and already I'm behind schedule on a video. So yeah, where we last left off with Tahiti, uh, we got her 5.3 semi apart, pulled the cam out, put a Tick Performance Stage 2 turbo cam in there, did a little resealing, got a new uh, gasket on the front cover, rear cover, new crank pulley seal, and then I put a newish timing chain, LS2 timing chain, and a Melling used oil pump that came out of my Camaro's old 5.3 that's kind of wedged under my workbench there. Um, there's a whole playlist on that car. If you want to get more familiar with it, figure out, uh, see exactly where I pulled these parts from. If you're not familiar with the channel, link will be for that uh, car at the top of the screen. But uh, yeah, we basically got the cam done, got the uh, oil pump, that stuff installed, got the oil pan reinstalled. We drilled and tapped a uh, drain for the turbo, which is this thing is going to eventually have, and that's all plugged up and ready to go. I'm still waiting on the heads to get back. So they're currently over at Head Games Motor Works. They're getting a full valve job, uh, completely just reworked, um, milled, whole nine yards. I'm supposed to have those back on Wednesday. As you guys are seeing this, it's Monday. So a couple of days I'll have those heads back. And my goal right now is to get this motor prepped. So when those heads come back, I can just throw the gaskets on, throw the heads on, torque everything down, get it back into Tahiti. So yeah, all that really needs to get done, um, I wanna get the head surfaces prepped. So scrape all this little gasket material off, clean the pistons off with a wire wheel, get all that uh, carbon and shit off the pistons. And then I want to um, get the box, Block semi-cleaned, wire brushed, and just give it a coat of like engine paint just to clean it up, make it look a little nice before it goes back in. Uh, only other thing to do is install the head studs. I did manage to find them in my storage unit. Uh, these are AAP, ARP studs that I had, once again, in the 5.3 that was in my Camaro. So we're basically just going to do a bunch of cleaning, give it a little bit of paint, thread all these guys in. That way when the heads come, we just drop them on with some new gaskets and we'll be good to go. Yeah, so to get these guys clean, I just use a, um, a wire brush on a drill. See the rock and the piston? <laughs> She's well broken in. A well-seasoned 5.3. Yeah, and all this crap is just going in the coolant uh, passages, but yeah, whatever.
So this is my first time using one of these needle descalers. I picked this one up off of Amazon for pretty damn cheap. And uh, I'm blown away. I can't believe how good this friggin' thing worked. Like this got all of those kind of chunky, loose pieces of paint off that I knew were gonna be a problem just kind of using the drill with the wire brush. Um, I kind of used it to pick away a lot of the chunky monkey kind of gunk that's kind of, uh, you know, in all the crevices down by the oil pan. And uh, yeah, all those big flakes came off, all the kind of rust chunks came off, even went and hit the uh, crank pulley with it. And I might even give that a quick coat of black paint as well, which I wasn't planning on doing, but uh, totally worth it. All right, so it is the next day. And yesterday I spent a few hours really trying to descale this, get a degrease ready for paint, ultimately to decide that I don't want to paint it anymore. <laughs> Like, um, at the end of the day, this thing is going to be buried in the engine bay. You're not going to see it. All is going to be covered with the water pump and all the accessories. The only thing you're really going to see are the heads, and even those you could kind of barely see. Um, so it doesn't really make sense for me to throw some paint on here, especially since it's not super perfectly clean. Like, I can't go outside with a pressure washer and blast everything off. So there's still, like, even though it looks clean, Stick your finger, it still has some like schmutz and little areas and stuff. So the paint's probably not gonna stick that great anyway. Plus I figured um, being I'm not planning on painting the covers and all that stuff, uh, just leaving it the way it is, looking like a quarter million mile motor. Um, I think it's gonna fit Tahiti a lot better. Plus when we get the nice new uh, CNC rebuilt heads, throw them on there, they'll be shiny as hell. We got our new motor mounts going on, just putting the kind of new shiny go fast stuff on the original crusty 250,000 mile block. Um, I think that's the way I'm going to go with it. I think it's going to look pretty cool. So, um, I give you guys a little glance at these in a short, um, a few months back. And these are the reason why we're here. So pretty much, um, uh, Richard over at Atomic Fab and Performance sent me these to try out in Tahiti. They're poly, fully custom built mounts by him. And, uh... Motor mounts in Tahiti are completely shot. Like the rubber's gone. They're just sitting on the uh, frame at this point. Like the, the rubber's so like smashed down. There's like almost no uh, mount left. So I figured, hey, I'll pop these in. And then when I went under there to see the job, I realized it's leaking a lot of oil. It's kind of a pain to get the mount. Might as well pull the motor and here we are. So all we're gonna do is bolt these to the block. And yeah, they are poly. So you are gonna get some more vibration through the chassis than you will with a traditional just rubber mount. However, I'm not too worried about it because for one thing, these things are gonna be able to pretty much hold whatever the hell I throw at it, power-wise. And the other reason, I have um, poly mounts on my Camaro and that car is a lot more rowdier than this Tahoe is gonna be. And um, I can handle the vibration and that just fine. So I don't think it's going to be a problem, but let me find the bolts here. And yeah, these plates bolt to the block and then the, uh, this end, this bolt slides out, this end bolts to the uh, cross member on Tahiti. And then all we have to do is drop the motor onto this, slip the bolt through, and that's it. It's pretty much just like a traditional, um, like small block Chevy or regular like LS uh, F body kind of mount. Also, he had these custom powder coated at my request, this uh, cool blue color. Ultimately, when I was going to do the Trail Boss build on Tahiti or the, the off-road like TRX inspired build, um, I was planning on doing the calipers blue. So I figured, you know, I'll match them up with the motor mounts, but I still might do the calipers blue. Just, we're not gonna have the, uh, the 2020 brakes on there. All right, so this end could come off. I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna slide Tahiti back because I have to get the, um, I have to get the 5.3 out in front of her anyway, so I can steal the head studs off it to put on this. So I think when I do that, we'll go in and we'll pop these guys in her engine bay. That is a nice, that is an exact fit. 
Look at that. No movement there. All right, well, I got her pushed forward so I could get in here. Look at that. We'll pop each of those in, and um, I'm not sure if I want to keep them loose because there's a little bit of kind of slack, like the, the holes are ovaled. I don't know if that's just for installation or if you want to have this, you know, a little bit of wiggle when you drop the engine in in case one of them's like cocked a little way and it's not going to fall in. I'm just going to go ahead and send them home. Don't know if I want to put Loctite on them because the factory had it on there. Ideally, you'd want to clean the rust off the threads. I didn't. And I know you're also probably wondering, hey, why is he installing those nice blue motor mounts now when the engine bay still looks like a crappy, rusty mess? And that is because I'm not gonna paint the engine bay. I went back and forth about hitting it with either some of that, that wax coating that I used. A lot of you guys have been asking how it's been holding up. I used a wax coating on the frame um, last, before last winter. And it's, it's, eh, it's not as good as I thought. I mean, in the coating's defense or the company that makes it, whatever, I kind of half acidly put it on underneath because I'm just laying on my back. I didn't have a lift, so I just kind of, I did one coat on everything. I think if you pile it up more, it's probably gonna hold up better or you apply multiple coats over the years. Um, it's still on there, but there is rust. Kind of like if you just paint over rust, you got little, little um, spots that are just kind of coming through it. So it definitely didn't hold up perfectly. And once we have this thing out of here, I'll give you guys a, a look at that. And ultimately what I decided to do, instead of wasting time, you know, not only spraying that stuff in the engine bay, all over the frame and everything. Um, the other thing I was gonna do was just pour 15 it or just hit it with regular undercoating. But I know the undercoating is eventually gonna rust off. You really wanna uh, pour 15 it first to seal it and then put a top coat over it. However, this thing still has a lot of the original kind of wax coating still in place. And I do not have it in me to just kind of come in here and pick away and wire brush all that off, get the frame nice and clean. This is like a frame off restoration. I just send it out, get, have it get blasted, whatever, have it sealed and you know, you'd be good to go. But in this, and it's gonna continue to be like a daily driver, um, it's not worth it to me to go through that work. And because of that, I did, however, pick up an alternative because I didn't want to just leave it completely unprotected, especially now since I have the engine out, I can kind of get in there and spray the frame rails. Uh, so I'm gonna be driving this stuff. This is PB Blaster Surface Shield. It's essentially just a, um, just a frame coating, kind of like fluid film, but supposedly it's supposed to be better, it's thicker. Um, I've seen a lot of reviews on it online. A lot of people say it's a great freaking uh, product. So I got six cans of this and I'm just gonna come in here and just soak all this down as good as I can. We'll put the motor back in. And then from there on out, yearly, I'll just keep applying this stuff and it should eventually build up a nice uh, thick coating. But next up, I have uh, our little Donor 5.3 pulled out and ready to go. All I need to do is pull the studs out of here. When I pulled the heads off with the engine in my Camaro, I ended up just pulling the longer ones and I was able to leave those in and get the heads off that way with the engine still in the car. So I have the top ones that I went digging through storage for. 
And I have the nuts too. I might be missing like a nut or a washer, but I'm pretty sure I should be able to source them separately. But these are the ones that, yeah, you'll focus. These are the ones that go on the top. Like so, and then I have the little tiny ones that go up here. And then I even have a good amount of lube left. So I'm gonna have to go and buy any lube. So I'm just gonna wind a nut down here. They have little hex keys in the top of them. But I mean, that's really just to kind of wind them in. Cause when you install them, you're not supposed to tighten them. You're just supposed to bottom them out just until they bottom out in the hole. You're not supposed to actually torque them into the head or into the block. However, once they're in there, they go through some heat cycles and they get some rust on them. They do tend to get stuck. Let's see what this does for us. Oh man, that's not doing much. Okay. Oh, there she goes. Woof. Oh, I still got what? One, two, three, four, five, four, nine to go then. Okay. Yeah, you can see what I mean. Get all that kind of crap in there. And they get a little stuck. And I do have, not really plans, but I do want to do something with this motor. Because I have a full set of um, Gen 4 rods that came, came out of my uh, Camaros 5.3 when I did the, the Summit Forged rotating assembly. So I got a good crank. I have a good set of Gen 4 rods. Whoops. And really all I need, I mean, not even, because the pistons are all right in this. They just they just kind of tap the crank a little bit when the rod's bent because the uh, the length of the rod shortened. So it was just enough to get the top, the bottom of the pistons to just slightly tap the counterweights on the crank. But I mean, you know, if you're doing a really truly budget build, I could probably get away with reusing those. However, I'm planning on probably just picking up like a $500 set of Summit. Ugh. Summit uh, 5.3 pistons. I got the rods. I'll just send the whole thing out for a quick balance. Have the block cleaned. And then, uh, yeah, I could put this in something and have, you know, relatively nothing into it. And I also have a spare, oh, kind of, when uh, Tahiti's transmission blew. And I kind of Frankenstein together a new transmission between a 4L70 or a 4L65 and a 4L60. I have like a spare case and a bunch of parts of that. I really just need a clutch kit. And then I'll have a transmission. So yeah, I can kind of piece together a drivetrain to put in something. However, I have nothing to put it in. That's what she said. Let's see how this stuff works. We'll see if that keeps uh, the rust out of the cylinders. Because I'm not exactly wrapping this correctly. Found a washer. So after going through the hardware that I have for those studs, I'm missing one big washer, which I just found. 
I'm missing one big nut and then I'm missing two small washers. I'm more concerned with finding that last nut. That's definitely the washers, it has the bevel on it. Now, I don't know if I can actually buy them individually. I'd like to think I can, but I mean, I'm not buying a whole nother set of head studs just because I can't find two little tiny washers and one nut. But I'll look in a few more places and uh, I'll get back to you guys once it's time to put the heads back on. All right, so as much as I'd love to just crank these into our block, I'm gonna do the responsible thing and I'm going to order a thread chaser because I don't have one that fits an LS. And I'm just gonna chase all of the holes before we put the studs in. So next video, I'll have these all cleaned up. We'll uh, chase the block get all these installed. Hopefully by then I could track down um, one of those missing nuts for one of the head studs. And then I need two of the, the small washers and um, I'll have a complete set. Hopefully I can get that stuff separately because if not, I am not buying a whole nother set. And um, I might just throw head bolts in at that point. However, yeah, next video we'll have the heads back. We'll get them slapped on and we'll get this thing back into Haiti. <laughs>